I'm um, Moses Wanga. Uh, friends call me Mo. Uh, originally from Fiji. Um, that's where I um, uh, encountered the uh, moral rearmament, MRA, and became active with the Initiative of Change as a volunteer there. And um, migrated to Melbourne uh, with the family six years ago. Um, during all that period, been active with uh, Initiative for Change and also uh, setting up a Pacific Peace Network uh, in the Pacific. When you running a Pacific Peace Network, what is it that you learn from the Pacific Islands? How do they feel the impact of climate change today? Peace in the Pacific now is primarily defined in terms of human security. Human security within the realm of the environment, uh, the ecology, and basically in terms of um, the limited land and space in which people live and subsist. Um, so peace in the Pacific is very much a, an environmental issue, a climate change issue, uh, because it's not a question of um, um, philosophical argument. It is a question of um, life and death matter. It's a, question of survival and if you live in a community which is barely two meters above the sea level um, and you are constantly threatened in terms of your livelihood uh, threats uh, every time you have a uh, high tide and high rainfall and comes in in cycles uh, not once in a lifetime but every season and you top that up with um, cyclone seasons and king tides um, and new moons and you add to that um, the El Nino effect where previously averaging in the Pacific you have two cyclones a year and now we've lost count in terms of averaging nobody knows what's the annual average um, and then you think in terms of food security and how you can hold on to the salinity problems to supply your basic food crops which you take for granted mm. um, yeah so in every front it is a survival it's a survival uh, quest it's it's a day-to-day -day, uh, thing so it is a huge challenge for Pacific Islanders it's a question of um, survival and in that sense, the question of survival of a whole, not only a village or community, it's a whole nation. Um, within that is a question of our identity. Um, what happens when there's no Tuvalu or Kiribati mm. or 85% of the Fijian population who subsists in the low-lying coastal areas? What happens after that? Yeah. So it's, it's huge. That was my second question. I mean if the situation continues to deteriorate as, as it does, migration seems unavoidable. How do people think about that? Do they believe that they can keep their culture and going someplace else? How do people see this issue? From a Pacific Island perspective, uh, culture um, has not only a um, um, cognitive and psychological dimension, but it's also a physical dimension in terms of physical space. Uh, names of, pe of people and um, totems um, and symbolism and metaphors about living and relationships with each other and with the environment is pivoted on physical space. Now when that physical substrate and space disappears, not because of any act of your, mm. of your own or responsibility, but it's taken away from somebody. It is worse than uh, physical threat through warfare. It is a, almost like a metaphysical threat. Mm. It's, it's, it, it does two things. One, um, if it is not transformational for positive outcome, it can be reversed where people go into uh, the, the bottomless pit of despair. 
and this is what leaders have to balance with. Um, how can they motivate people to look for answers when there are no answers? Mm. Um, so, it, so the issue of leadership in this is also huge.